Good morning. This is Cindy. Welcome to my channel. Today I thought I would tell you a little bit about what this past weekend has been. I went to a scrapbook creations retreat. Um, I'm going to link down below in the description box uh, so you can take a look at the site. But oh my glory, I am I am so creatively spent. I was going to do this whole video for today on Maker Monday and do an, up a bunch of stuff. And yeah, I have nothing left at the moment. I need a break from my break. So I thought I, I'm going to go ahead and um, put chapter headings down below in the description box so you can skip around in this video as you would like to. Um, I'd like to say a welcome to all of the new subscribers and a big thank you to all of you. Those, especially those of you who have been here for such a long time, thanks for being a subscriber. We're almost up to 600. Holy cow. So I have my notes here so that I wouldn't forget what it is I'm doing. Um, so I, my first thing up, what I did this weekend and my expectations versus the reality of what was there. So what I did was I went to a retreat it was from Thursday at noon until uh, Sunday at three. And it basically was an entire ballroom of the Hilton Garden Inn in Auburn, New York. 71 of us all on these tables. We each had our own six foot section. Um, I knew all of this going in that this was what was going to be. And so this is all my expectations. I expected there to be a lot of us. But I still expected something more cozy, I guess. I, I kind of thought there would be workshops and demonstrations or, and or demonstrations. There wasn't. It was just, here's your space, play. Have a good time, create. There were door prizes. There, were, uh, there was a raffle fundraiser. And um, really a lot of talking, a lot of getting to know each other, that sort of thing, which I expected as well, but it was not cozy. Cozy was not a word I would use. And in fact, my husband said, he came in on Saturday night to take me out to dinner. And he took one look at the room and he said, and he was overwhelmed because he said, it looks like you could teach sweatshops a thing or two about working because <laughs> everybody was focused. And although there were conversations going on here and there, everybody was really focused on what they were doing and on their creations. So it was really kind of, I, the word I used for the weekend was intense. And I will continue to use that word probably several times. Okay, Jumping so in here to say, I have a little video of my, table space that I will play here and insert and show to you. Be back soon. It is 5.30 in the morning and I am speaking very quietly, but I wanted to show you my setup and how I chose to put things together. I'm not going to do a lot of explanation at this point, just so you can see. Like I said, there are a lot of people, although I do want to show you what I ended up doing with my little cart. Sorry, that was my fingers. I'm trying to hold this, hand hold this. Um, somebody gave me the idea of using it like a drawer so to keep in all the extra stuff that I don't, I'm not using right away. So that's what I have done there. And over here. That's my one completed journal. I'll do a walkthrough on these on Wednesday. All right, till later, this is Cindy signing off. Okay, so what did I accomplish while I was there? I'm not going to show them to you today. I will be doing a walkthrough uh, Wednesday on Wednesday. And I, I completed three journals. I took four with me uh, and actually ended up realizing I had enough for five. So I completed three and I, the fourth one is about 80% done. 
So I will get that finished up. Maybe it'll be finished by Wednesday and I can do the walkthrough Wednesday. Um, I'm trying to figure out, I have my camera tilted sideways and I'm trying to figure out where the button, where I should be looking. So I hope I'm looking in the camera and not like way off to the side or someplace weird. Um, so I also will not be, well, hopefully I can still show you one. I did do a recording of it um, at the retreat, but I sold one. So I made three, sold one, and I have 80% of another one done. So that's what I accomplished. What I learned. What did I learn? Well, first thing I learned was I need more shelf space. You should see some of these setups. Oh my glory. I could not believe that the shelves and the cases and all of this. So I learned that I need more shelf space. Tina, one of the people I met there, gave me a tip as I was unpacking the, the very first day that was invaluable. And I have that, I, that rolling cart. If you watch my packing video, I think I, I showed it folded up. I, well, I had it obviously unfolded and was, had, was bringing my things out of it. And I had intended to just leave it up in my room. And she said, no, shove it under your table. And now you have like a drawer of stuff and that was wonderful i will definitely do that again i brought a table with me but because of the way my six feet was set up i had a leg right in the middle of my table so i sat off to the side and so things were kind of far away from me you know i had my two and a half feet of crafting space on one end of that six feet so i had all the rest of that three feet or three and a half feet of space over to the side that was just kind of junky because I didn't have any shelves for it. Um, and I just kind of had things sitting there and then I had the rolling cart underneath the table. If I do this again, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, if I don't have that leg in the middle, I could have the rolling cart on one side and a little table on the other. I brought the table with me, I didn't use it. I ended up sending that back home with my husband. Um, so that's one of the things I learned. A better chair. Oh my glory. Those hotel chairs, my back hurt so much by the time I got to Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon, they uh, one of the wonderful things that they had was were two masseuses doing chair massages. So I signed up for a 15 minute section. I should have done a 30 minute section. Oh, she was wonderful. But the the reality was the chair was too low. I was bent over a lot of the time. And by the time I got home yesterday, I felt like a pretzel. I could not wait to sit in my own chair, my own big recliner chair, and just put my feet up because it really hurt. One of the things that several of the crafters did was bring their office chair from the their bedroom down. That's what I should have done because it was a beautiful chair. It, I could change the height on it. It had beautiful arms on it. So I could just lift myself up. It would have been so much more comfortable if I had done that. So I've learned, if I do this again at the Hilton Garden Inn, bring my chair downstairs with me and use it. Um, as far as the things that I brought with me, I brought four kits that I had put together I had the pages for the signatures, although the signatures weren't put together. I brought a bunch of ephemera. I didn't necessarily bring a lot of stuff to make ephemera, like pockets and things with. That was a mistake because the first kit, like I said, I had enough to do two journals. I finished those off, got those completely done by Friday noon, Friday early afternoon. Um, I got the two of those done and then it took me another 24 hours to get the next journal done because I didn't have any, any stuff. I didn't have enough stuff to make the pockets with. So I learned on that. But what I also learned was perhaps I watched the way Gail Augustinelli does them and she pretty much assembles her signatures decides her ephemera, puts everything in the thing, and then just assembles when she gets there. There's really not a lot of heavy-duty creative thought. 
there's some because she's adding laces and you know making decisions about what pockets go where and whatnot but she's not a lot of it is just assembly and i begin to see why because there's a lot of conversation going on there's a lot of creative energy floating around that room but you can get creatively burnt out and that's what happened to me i said i called it uh creatively spent by Saturday night, I couldn't think anymore. I just, I, I had no more ideas. I brought my idea book. Um, I brought a, a wonderful uh, swap that I just got that hopefully I will also do on Wednesday. I will show you that swap. Uh, otherwise, I'll just wait and hold that till next Wednesday. I just didn't have the creative energy to produce anymore. By the time I got to Saturday night, I was so mentally exhausted from two and two full days and another half day of intense concentration and fun. I mean, it was fun. Believe me, I'm not dissing that at all. It, I had a lot of fun, but I was just so tired. So I think next time I might bring some mass make stuff, um, something that I can just do when the creative part just says, Okay, we're done turning off. There were two other junk journalers there, and I absolutely loved what they were doing. Um, there, there were the person sitting across from them made covers, and they made junk journals. And they had done they had assembled a couple of junk journals early on, but then every time I'd walk past, they were mass making something else, because, and and their tables were facing each other. So they could just, you know, talk over their table and about what they were doing. And I thought that was a really nice idea. That was, I learned that too. Because that was the other thing is that people are friendly. Oh my glory. Everybody was willing to talk to you, show you things. You walk around the room and people love to talk about their stuff. I asked questions of people that had things. Um, somebody had one of those suitcase uh, not big shots, but uh, it, it, it was a Sizzix suitcase thingy. But, oh, my glory, was it heavy. She said, try to pick it up. I was like, holy cow. Here I'm thinking it's nice. It's compact. It folds up. That would be nice. It was heavy. Oh, my glory. Um, did I take anything I didn't use? <laughs> yes. I knew that this was going to be the case, but I wasn't sure what I would use and what I didn't. First of all, I took my crocodile. I took the, the, the big boy here and um, thinking, and I took eyelets so that I could make tags and whatnot, and then ended up not using it. I either did fancy stuff or I didn't do tags or I used my hole punch or whatever. Um, however, the one of the other two junk journalers borrowed it and used it to put a tag in. So I was glad I had it, and I I would still pack it again, even though I didn't use it this time. Um, I would st still pack it again. Um, most of my acrylic stamps I did not use, and I'm not sure I'd bother bringing them next time. To be honest with you, I have a lot of stamps I have to clean here at home because I, I realized after I did my first stamp and I stamped off the page, and I thought, I don't have a place to wash it. Here at home, my bathroom's right around the corner, and I just go run the water over it, warm water, and pat it dry, and we're done. Um, I didn't wasn't able to do that, so I I stained some of my stamps because I couldn't wash off the ink. I yes, I had the wet wipes, but they didn't take off very much ink. So I don't know if I would bring as many acrylic stamps or any next time. Um, the fan. I don't know where my fan is at the moment. I think it's way over there. Um, I brought a little fan, little portable fan. I never used it, never turned it on. I wore t-shirts and a sweater the entire time because it was really warm in the in the ballroom, or it's the, the craft room. It was really warm in there, um, but I never needed the fan. I would still bring it with me anyway, just in case. And sweatshirts. I brought three sweatshirts with me and three t-shirts. I wore the t-shirts. The sweatshirts stayed in my suitcase. Uh, I would pack differently for clothing next time. So those were the things that I didn't use. 
Um, will I do it again? There are two cons and, a, and some pros. So let me go through. So the first con is that I'm an introvert. So I need to, all of that creative energy, all of that noise and stimulation and all of those people. I need a break from that every once in a while and I need a quiet place. So I don't share a room. I get my own room, which makes it expensive. So this was an expensive weekend. It cost me just under $600 to do this. That's a lot of money. It was a lot of fun, but it's a lot of money. And the second con is kind of related to that. I have my own craft space here at home. Um, I don't need the time away as so many of the women there who did because you know, some of them were working and they didn't get there till Friday night because they had full-time jobs. And so they were working. And so this was a, a time away from the, the family. It was a time away from their job. Um, it was a literal retreat. It was a definitely a way to spend some time away from the real world and just spend some time crafting. I also don't have to pick up. I used to have to do that, but I don't have to do that anymore. And a lot of these women still were doing that. And that, by the way, was interesting. 71 of us, all women. Not one male chromosome in the entire room. I found that interesting. Probably not so surprising, but interesting. In any case, because so many people have, are working off their dining room tables or off of a shared space in their house, they have to clean up all the time. And I used to have to do that all the time when the kids were little and I didn't have a space of my own. Now that I have a space, I don't really need the retreat part of it so much. It would be more for the socialization. And that leads me to the pros of the weekend. Like I mentioned before, the creative energy. Holy cow, walking around the room and seeing what some of these people were creating, amazing. Now, it was billed as a scrapbooking retreat. And I would say out of the 71 of us there, at least 60 were scrapbookers and they were creating scrapbook pages. Um, there were two other junk journalers and me, so that was three of us. There was a woman who was making the covers um, as opposed to scrapbook pages. The woman behind me was a quilter and she had brought her sewing machine and quilt pieces and she was making a bunch of different projects. So she was sewing the, the entire weekend. Um, I saw somebody with the jewels. They were, I don't know. I didn't, I, she was never there when I happened to walk past her booth. So I could, never could ask her any questions, but she had a whole bunch of those. I always think like they were like the diamond dots but she was doing them on uh, a cylinder of some, I don't know if she was doing glasses or cups or what, but anyway, she had a whole bunch of stuff over there. Um, so she was doing that. So there were, there were other types of crafts that were going on. A lot of card makers. I saw probably four or five different women making cards of sort of different sorts. Um, so there was a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going on that was not necessarily scrapbooking, which made me feel good because that was cool. So like when I talk about a lot of creative energy, I mean a lot. There was a lot going on, um, it, and which led to a great exchange of ideas. At one point, Tina behind me was working. Um, she was using a new technique, and she a lot of people gathered around her table and were watching her, and she explained the technique that she was doing. I think I wanted a little bit more of that. And I wanted a little bit more formalized. And I didn't, I love the idea of being able to just go and craft, but it would have been nice to have the option to go to a demonstration about this technique or that technique or whatever, which is really what I kind of expected. I've been to a lot of writers conferences and, and the writers conferences, there are always presentations of some sort on uh, either panel discussions or topics of uh, that, that writers are interested in or techniques or uh, advertising things, all sorts of things. This was strictly a crafting retreat, period. And of course, one of the pros was that I made new friends.
I got to meet a lot of people who are uh, mostly Rochester based, so they're not too far away. We bonded over some shared places in Rochester and had a good time there. So, yeah. So will I do it again? I don't know. There's one coming up in November. The Scrapbook Creations does three in the spring and three in the fall. Um, and they're in Amherst, New York, East Aurora, and Auburn. The Amherst, no, the... East Aurora one is already sold out for the fall. And apparently that one's in October and it sells out quickly. The September one is in Amherst and the November one is in uh, Auburn, it, it, right where I was. So it is, and those still have slots open. I, like I said, I'll put the link down below. So if you're interested, you can take a look at her website. She does not have a physical store. She brings a pop-up store so that if you need papers or embellishments and things like that, um, you have them. You can get them there. I will share with you, I got a door prize at one point, and I have it. I think I have it right here. I do. Um, I chose... Black and white butterflies. Aren't those cool? Because I have in my head that I want to do a black and white um, journal. And then, of course, I just watched last night. I, is it somebody? Now i got to go look it up again. Is doing a... Um, oh, Seven Plaza was doing a bunch of, of things. And there's a whole bunch of black and white ephemera that's out there now. And I'm like, Really? I think it's 49 and me is doing a black and white series. Uh, and I thought, I just had this idea last week. And then when I saw these this weekend, I said, oh, there we go. I'll get the butterflies for my black and white journal. And now somebody else is doing it. It's in the zeitgeist, I guess. All right. So what I'm going to do is work on my journal. Fit, try to get that finished up for Wednesday's walkthrough. Um, on Friday, I believe it is fabulous. It's fabulous Funfold Friday. Try saying that three times fast. I can barely say it once. Fabulous Funfold Friday. There we go. So we'll be doing that on Friday. Next Monday will be a regular. Well, I will return you to your regularly scheduled programming of Maker Monday, and we'll make something together. If you have questions for me, please make sure you put them down in the comments. And if you are enjoying these, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. And, of course, hit that like button and let, every, let YouTube know. Thank you all for coming with me on this journey. Um, I, as I said, I did sell a journal. I did not promote this weekend. I simply took my cards. I had them sitting on the edge of my table. I hadn't even done anything with them. They were just sitting there. In fact, I forgot about them because, as I said, they were three and a half feet away from me. Um, and somebody, my, the, the Rhonda who sat next to me, picked one up and said, Oh, can, is this your card? Can I take one? And I was like, sure. And then she bought a journal from me, which was cool. So I'll put those videos together for Wednesday, and I will see you then. Till later. Have a great day, and this is Cindy signing off.